my name is Stephanie Benassi, and um, I do work in photography, but I also work in collage, and I didn't include any of my work today, but I do want to talk about um, some of Mike Cloud's pieces from the perspective, certainly looking at the title, but how he uses the title and the way that he works, he sort of reduces it down to get to the body. So the first piece that I'm going to start with really talking about is this, this piece right here. That's me. <laughs> okay. And so the Rape of Sabine um, was an incident in um, Roman mythology. Um, it's an event that happened, um, or myth mythologically happened, where Romans felt like they didn't have enough women to reproduce, so they went out and they abducted a bunch of women and tried to demand that they become their wives. And it's been portrayed in um, art history, in many different manifestations. This is a very famous piece. Um, it's, a sculpt it's a sculpture made out of marble. And there's, you know, usually when we talk about this piece, the abduction of the Sabine women, it's always about the twists and the turns and the contrapposto and sort of really the elegance of the, the form sort of in motion but static. Nicholas Poussin also did a rendering, this is a painting, and again, the twists and the turns and sort of the excitement, and we can sort of see the abduction. Now all of these art pieces that I'm showing you, none of them actually show the rape, they just show the abduction, okay? And we even have Pablo Picasso doing, um, he did a series of eight of these, these are drawings, this is um, the abduction of Sabine women, number four. But as I was looking at these, and I saw this, I was like, what is he after? What is, he's he sort of, he calls the show figures, but he takes out the figure, and we're sort of left with just the title. Rape of the Sabine women, or rape plus the Sabine women, or but only. And so what I think ends up happening here is that by removing the figures, and I'm just going to go back to the sculptor. Oops. By removing the figure and removing the sort of elegance of how it's been portrayed art historically, I think we get something that's a little more visceral. The removal of the figure sort of gets us closer in touch with the body. And he does it in his quilts as well, these quilt pieces. He's removing all of the figures, and one of them's called Bodybuilder, and we're getting closer and closer in touch with the body. And so what I thought about, especially with this piece here, is this is kind of like, we've all heard the song, Gimme Shelter. And this is kind of like the art historical version, or the sculpture, and the Nicholas Poussin, and the Pablo Picasso, that's like the lick or the track that we hear on the radio or hear on the um, Let It Bleed album. And usually Mick Jagger is dancing when he's performing this song. There's a lot of twists and turns and beauty in his body and beauty in the music. But what it made me think of was this documentary I saw where they reduced or took out all of the rock and roll parts. And they just sort of went to this visceral track of the background singer, somehow I'm up here, oops, I broke it. <laughs> of that famous track. And this clip that I'm about to play is with all of Mick Jagger and Keith Richards and the rock and roll and the dancing and all of the stuff knocked off and just her singing. When, when I 
played. And, but when I heard just Mary Clayton's background, I really got these like strong senses of chills. And you know, just hearing the background, the reduction, she's getting away from, we could say the Rolling Stones are sort of the contrapposto, the twists and the turns and sort of the beauty of it, and getting back to this really volatile, strong place that this rape and murder is like this really strong word. And I think that's what he's getting at here, that the removal of the figure brings us back to the body. We start to really read these visceral tones in the body. I'm also going to say that, make the case for these two, that these also have very visceral, by removing all the faces and parts of the body, we're also concentrating on the fingerprints and the painting, the way he's sort of dragging the paint across, he's getting back to the body. The last thing that I want to talk about are the um, collages that are in the corner. And we'll we look at them as a group or later, but one of the things that I noticed in the titles is that he repeats Annie Leibovitz Orange, and then he has another title, Annie Leibovitz, Annie Leibovitz, Annie Leibovitz, Annie Leibovitz. And what I thought was really interesting was that just by saying Annie Leibovitz over and over and over again, it's almost like he's trying to conjure the body. Annie Leibovitz became really famous, famous photographer, by taking photos of other people who were famous. So in many ways, her sort of notoriety is sort of appropriating and riding the back on other famous people. Mike Cloud clipping those famous people out or leaving parts in, there's sort of a flicker of recognition and not recognition. He's sort of removing Annie Leibovitz in that to bring Annie Leibovitz sort of to the forefront through her removal. So I thought he was doing that in all of this work. And that's you know, what made it really fascinating and interesting to me, because it is sort of the abstraction that brings us back to sort of the visceral nature of the work. Next. That's fine. <laughs>